hardcore, sold out, abandoned, on fire, radical? This is Bruce Lamb on Spirit Life. Should Christians be radical? Well, ultimately, that's going to depend on your definition of the word radical. But I'm betting that right off the bat, nobody's ambivalent on this one. Most people are strongly in favor or adamantly against it. If you're a true believer, you might be thinking, sure, one should be radical versus complacent. But critics of religion hear the word radical and they cringe. For instance, what do you feel when you hear the term radical Islam? According to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, radical is a synonym for really awesome and cool. But according to Webster's Dictionary, radical is very different from the usual or traditional. Extreme! Doritos, you're a decade late. So, if being radical is being very different from the traditional or the normal, then should a Christian be that? Again, we're going to have to clarify because the word radical is a comparing adjective. So, if a Christian is being compared to the unbelieving world in which she lives, then yes, she should have a devotion to the Lord that's unusual in comparison to everyone else. When their priority is anything but pleasing God, she should look different from what's normal. So what does the Bible say about being radical? Jesus demands an extreme devotion to himself. He requires that we make him our first priority. In fact, he wants us to love him with all of our heart, all of our strength, all of our soul, all of our mind. He demands obedience. And he says, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. He says, if you want to follow me, you have to take up your cross daily and deny yourself. And he says, you must be perfect as the Heavenly Father is perfect. In fact, he says, if you love anyone, your father or mother, brother, sister, your son or daughter, more than me, then you're not worthy of me. So it looks like all those youth group terms apply after all. God does want us to be on fire for him, sold out to him, abandoned to do whatever he desires. Chasing God is a hardcore event. It requires sacrifice on our part, giving up our preferences, laying aside interpersonal status sometimes, getting rid of our material attachments. But wait, there's more. While it's healthy to be inspired by other Christians, we shouldn't be comparing one to another to determine if we're radical or not. A new believer might feel like he's being hardcore if he throws away all his insane clown posse CDs, while a seasoned saint might determine that a 40-day fast would be a radical move for him. The point is not to compare to each other, but to compare to the place where you used to be versus the new level of deeper devotion that God is bringing you. You know, being sanctified into the image of the perfect Christ is a radical thing because by nature our flesh desires things that are contrary to the Spirit. And so God is always going to continually stretch us out of our comfort zone. When should we not be rad? I've always had the personality type that hates being like everybody else. Usually that worked in my favor. Hey man, you want some drugs? Everybody's doing it. Oh, really? Everybody? <laughs> Not interested. It started working against me once I joined a ministry where everyone around me is on fire for God. My trying to be different from those people would mean being less devoted to God. I had to realize that my identity doesn't come from being different from everybody else for its own sake, but just by embracing who God made me to be. And it turns out that I'm unique on my own without having to overdo it. My point is, we shouldn't try to be radical for its own sake. We shouldn't think of the most extreme things we can do and then do them because they're extreme. Comparing to other people and trying to outdo them always leads to weird super spiritual nonsense. God's not interested in sacrifice. He's interested in obedience. We have to always be led by the Spirit. If we're actually led by the Spirit and we're grounded in the Word and we have accountability with other believers, we're not going to end up doing all this wacky, hateful, crazy stuff that makes Christianity get a bad name. Let's wrap things up. David Platt has a great book called Radical. In it, he describes how much of our modern American Christianity has turned into little more than a self-help philosophy. 
It's like, sprinkle on some Jesus when it's convenient. But following Jesus is anything but convenient. Look at the thousands of believers all over the world who are suffering for His name. They stand for their Savior despite costing them dearly in loss of social status, familial acceptance, and job opportunities. Their faith often costs them physical harm and even death. In fact, every biblical disciple was murdered for his faith. Now that's being sold out to God. Jesus said so himself, Greater love has no man than this, that he would lay down his life for his friend. Now, I'm not saying that we all need to pack up and go move to a 1040 nation just to suffer. But, if our Christianity looks nothing like the disciples' example, if we're in a constant state of comfort, and if our faith costs us nothing, we're probably not radical. But if we truly love Jesus with all our heart, and we make Him our first priority, we're going to get urgent for the gospel. We're going to do the second commandment really well and love our enemies and our neighbor. We're going to desire Jesus above any other earthly pleasure. And that's not going to annoy as many non-believers as you're afraid. Although we are going to stick out like a sore thumb. And I think we'll probably annoy a lot of Christians. The fact is some are going to be legitimately concerned that we can't keep up that level of fervency very long, that we're young and naive and we'll get burnt out. But most will be convicted about their lack of enthusiasm. But who cares what they think? We're not in this for them, we're in it for Jesus. And as long as we know we're doing everything we can do to serve Him with all our heart, then we'll be fine. Are we doing everything we know to do to serve Him with all of our heart? And have we pushed all else aside to make Him our first priority? Are we doing all that we know to do to obey Him in every area? When we embrace the true Christian lifestyle, radical is going to become our new normal. This is Bruce Wham on Spirit Life.